<laughs> this is the uh, the crazy ice storm clinic first day. Here we are. It's probably going to get bigger as we go along, but um, yeah, we're doing Roku Kata. So this is Koru Dai Roku, and um, yeah, for a long time, one of my aspirations has been to to get uh, the complete Koru system on film and to have our own reference point online for everybody. And I should say for the larger world uh, that may tune in to see any of this, this is our interpretation. Um, the, uh, we do our own things with it and, uh, and I, as far as I'm concerned the whole world's free to do whatever they want with these, uh, with these katas. Um, I think they're neat repositories of technical variants and um, one of the things that has come up and questions that have been asked uh, over the years, I think John Powell a couple of years ago asked uh, as he was going through the higher kata sets, how come there's these repetitions? How come you see this technique in Ichi kata, then you see it again in Yan kata? How come in, you, know, you see a couple of techniques here in Yan kata, then you see them again in Go kata? And it, it occurs to me that uh, one way to, to work with those repetitions is to do them all as variations and to, to have different emphasis or different themes coming on. So as we've started to work through Roku Kata, we've worked into more of the Daitoru end of the spectrum of things a little bit. Uh, we want to sort of present a general version that is fairly close to what the standard Kata form goes with. And then we'll modify a bit. So. Also, there's a bit here at the start on your knees, and if you're comfortable on your knees, great. If you're not comfortable on your knees, then you're welcome to modify and sit in chairs or, or sit cross-legged on the ground, either way. And we'll work with that as, as well. Cool? So, questions? With that, I'm going to start with Courtney, da uh, Courtney Wahlberg here. All right. Courtney, our principal person for this cut off the bat, so I will, um, I'll okay for you. And... Uh, or would you prefer to throw somebody else around? And I, we can do it however you want. Okay. Is this the good orientation Let here? Check. Let Let's check the for, a bit. for future. I think we're probably good. I just, you're, in, you're in a great spot, Courtney. That's great. Is this a good? That's a good zone right there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can, one of you guys want to be thrown? Sure. Ish, ish, not <laughs> not really thrown. Okay. Come on over here. Yes. All right. So yeah, lay it on. We'll it. just go through the. There are five. You know, the reward for you guys braving the ice <laughs> is you get to do the fun, fun kneeling techniques, <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone else is going to come in later, and they'll do the standing, and they'll be going great. Uh, we get to do the fun. Part. We and, happy few indeed, right? And in fact, Nick might want to tell us why we do kneeling techniques at all. Um, I just do it saying, okay, yeah. it's, a, it's a position of limited mobility and how do you deal with that? That's the way I look at it. But I look at uh, these different oddities, particularly the kneeling forms that come up in these katas as like isolation work. So we're we're going to go to the gym and we're going to work on our biceps and you can just pick up the heavy weight and do biceps but you know if you put it over the preacher's curl bench then you're right. going to have a very isolated bicep curl you're going to get a different effect and it's going to force you to develop a different form when you're doing stuff from Seiza it forces you to do a different form how to work with the legs and how to work with the hips differently and that's the first emphasis so if you're you're just starting your kneeling work in, in the lower katas like uh, in Ichi kata or in San kata you have all this hip and leg and coming from the actions of the, of the toes getting live and, and how we drive even though we're sitting on our legs and we're not normally moving around like that but suddenly we have to learn to move around like that. A different type of isolation comes into it when we're when we're thinking of it in the more uh, rather than the Kitoru end of spectrum to the more Daitoru end of spectrum where we're isolating even further and we're going to let the hips get even even more quiet and everything's going to actually come from what's happening in the torso and from the from the level of your uh, diaphragm up basically cool and so it's types of isolation that go on with this yeah cool okay thank right, you sure. thank you okay so we'll try kneeling the first the first technique is a cross hand grab so a cross hand grab to my right and, he, and the idea here, as Nick was saying, is we've already learned about anticipating and, and moving ahead of time. This time we're going to look at it from the point of view of, he got me. 
I'm stuck, okay? So what do you do when you're stuck? Well, you want to off-balance him somehow. This side is free to move, so you make a little movement here. Now he's off-balance. Now he can either fall on his face, mm -hmm. or he can choose to regain his balance. If he regains his balance, now you have Oshitosh, and that looks just like Sankata right there, right? So once you have, so it's, the trick is just to make a little move that gets him off balance. And again, if he wishes to fall on his face, that's fine. I am not going to knee walk. <laughs> I'm going to walk back over here. I'll go through all five and then we'll go through them one at a time. So this next one is a cross hand grab to the other side. So now he's got this side. Now, where do you keep your sword? You keep your sword on your left if you've got a sword, right? So maybe he's trying to block me from getting at my sword or something. Or he's just decided to pin me there. Again, what are we going to do? We can't move that. He's, he's firm there. Can't move that. But I can move over here. Now he's off balance again. As he gets on balance, this time I'm going to put my elbow and my finger kind of right in the middle of him. If he chooses to go backward and fall, well that's fine. That's the end of the technique. If he tries to get his balance back, we can come around the back of his hand, and I got the legs wrong, come behind his arm, and then put him down. In kind of a reverse Oshitosh. On the next technique, it is a mirror hand grab to there. Okay, now this is the side I would have wanted to move, but I can't because he's got me. So this time what I'm going to do is get him off balance by coming at his face. Now he's off balance a little. Now I can come up and then it's just hickey tosh. So the idea is again, how do you get, how do you get yourself freed up for a little movement? On the other side, so it's another mirror hand. Um, Again, what are we going to do? We're going to punch him. Now we come up here, and this is a walkie gatami. Okay. And then the last one, this is going to look like san kata, like go kata. It's the double hand here. And remember, in, in san kata, go kata, you were to rise with your hands on your thighs. But as Nick said, we're trying to isolate that, so we pretend we can't rise immediately. But what I can do is kind of push my elbows in at his center. That pushes him up, and then he's just, if he goes that way, he goes that way. So you just push into the middle of him without rising at all. I think the idea on all of this, the key to make it work, is on that first attack, pick any guy like this, you can't give up your posture. If he comes in, if you rock back, mm -hmm. he's going to be all over you. That's the end of it right there, right? So I think what all five of these teach you, one of the things it teaches you is whatever the attack, you don't give up your balance. So he comes there, I don't rock back. I go, huh, can't move that. I'll come over here, see what he does if he comes up. And the other thing is, key to this is you wait on him to move, just like we've learned all along in Aikido, is you wait for them to move. You don't, let me come back here again, sorry about the, any attack you want. I don't come here and then force it, right? Because I have to wait until he does something. Yeah, when he does something, then you're ready to go. So do you guys want to practice this? We'll practice them one at a time. Um, the idea would be, you were doing great attacks. Just a firm pressure. You don't have to kill him. You want to feel the off balance. And, and you want to wait. So I would say, attacker, firm pressure. Uh, defender, keep your posture, and then wait for Uke to react to the loss of balance. Okay? So we'll just try it. One, we'll, so one we've got four of us out here. More and you can kneel, or if you want to sit in a chair, you can sit in a chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. This side is not free to move.
So I go, okay, can I get anywhere by just moving a little here? And I'm not even going live toes. The whole idea is you don't get live toes. Okay. And then, and then you hang out. This is key in Aikido. You hang out. He's discommoded at this point. Mm -hmm. And yeah, if he decides to react to it, now you come up with your typical Oshitaosh, which you've done in Sankata, that part. It's just the beginning, how you go into it is a little different. Because again, we've learned, we learned how to deal with some of these attacks in Sankata and in Gokata, but in those, we never let them, we never let them pin us, right? We anticipated the move, we saw it, or we initiated it. And so we dealt with it that way. The only thing that we had in the way of pinning was the double hand pin uh, in Sankata and in Gokata, right? All the others we got to move. So uh, with our thought as to how to deal with the kneeling in this, we thought, okay, um, deal with it from the point of view of being pinned since we've already learned how to move to avoid an attack. Sure. So let's, now we've so done it already. <laughs> Why don't we get over there? So, it's where's the, where's the... Why don't we face, there's the camera. Okay. <laughs> okay, an attacker. You look like an attacker, Chris. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, so the second one, which is going to be from a left-hand grab. So we did a right-hand grab, and we did Oshitaosh. So left-hand grab just to be other side, I guess. All right, same idea on this one. He's got me. I cannot move this. So I move over here. Now he's off balance. Well, we've already done the Oshitaosh one, right? right? So when he regains his balance, I just put my, my elbow toward his center and my finger up his nose, okay? And if he's okay with that, I mean, if he doesn't want to fight back, then over he goes. But again, we wait till he maybe doesn't want to be like that. And then we do the technique that actually shows up in Roku Kata. So he's here. I move a little bit. He comes up. I put my finger up his nose, elbow into him. He kind of fights it. That means he's pushing back at me. So I'm going to just put my hand here just to stabilize it. We already know about don't put two hands in one place because they can club you to death with the remaining arm. Okay? But we're just stabilizing this for a minute. We push through here. Come up with a mawash, then open up, and let him fall. And that's something we should now try. How about that?